Hello, happy holidays. I hope you are well. <laughs> if you're not, I, I get it. I feel you. That's okay. We're here to talk about it. I know that I don't owe anybody on the internet or otherwise any personal information about what's going on with me. What's what's what's, what's up in my life? Or uh, similarly, any explanations about why my content has been few and far between and also like different for the last however long but we we've been through like some bad times in the last half a year or so and i think i should talk about it around the end of june of this past year i had just finished up production on my latest ep don't be afraid i think just the culmination of like all the stress it takes to finish a project like that as well as some like weird health issues i was experiencing that I was trying to figure out and was confused by, as well as uh, the global trauma we're all still trudging through. Um, I think like all of that came together and just fucked me. <laughs> and like, I knew it would. I knew like eventually a lot of things were gonna catch up to me, but wowee, wowee. Like I said, I'd been having like weird health, like I had like a one-sided headache that was really painful for a while. I was like having dizzy spells out of nowhere. I had some like numb limb stuff going on. And it all led me to the hospital for the first time. <laughs> never, I never went to the hospital. And guess what? I went like four more times after this. I thought I was dying. I was not. And it was sort of just left at that. And then about a week later, I just spiraled. Just fully got drained down into the darkest period of my adult life so far. <laughs> like, trigger warning for... Uh, umbrella, term, the, uh, all the various things that happen to the human body and mind when you are riddled with anxiety. I don't really know how to get specific, but we're about to. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I, I thought I was dying of something new every single day. I was Googling and on Reddit incessantly just trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And I knew it was anxiety, but I also knew there was definitely something else. Like it was this really difficult confusing time because something was up and it was like just creating a feedback loop of anxiety symptoms symptoms anxiety around the clock all the time i was having panic attacks for the first time in my life crying all day getting woken up by my heart racing every night like i i stopped going out i couldn't see my friends i couldn't do anything i enjoyed anymore because i just couldn't get past thinking of the next episode I was gonna have or like what if this triggers me what if I don't make it what if I die what if I die all the time what if I die and I've like never been a stranger to anxiety or thoughts of death <laughs> these these are things that have been somewhat constant in my life but never troublesome just kind of like you yeah, know okay we can move past this this was different and it sucked and it hurt and I was miserable all the time for months a, a therapist a primary care doctor a cardiologist and a neurologist and hundreds of blood tests and a x-ray and ct scan and mri a measuring of my brain's electrical activity and a treadmill stress test we had come to the conclusion that i did in fact have pots P-O-T-S. It stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. It's a big, long, fancy term that basically means my circulatory system's a little messy. And my heart rate rises more than the average person's does. Let's say the average person has a resting heartbeat of 70 beats per minute. When they stand, it rises a little bit momentarily, and then it goes right back down to that sort of neutral state. Or about. Everyone's different. For me, it goes from 70 to at least 100 on a bad day, 130, 140, while I'm just standing, like not doing anything right. It's not, <laughs> like I'm not like lifting weights. But you can imagine that, you know, various activities like exercise, going up the stairs, walking up any hills really, taking a shower, being anxious. These things make the heart increase, so it makes mine increase more, which is exhausting <laughs> and causes dizziness and headaches and some stuff. So I sort of suspected that from the beginning of, of things, roughly, um, but it, it is unfortunately a diagnosis of exclusion, so you have to make sure that nothing else is wrong with your heart or your body or your blood pressure. Turns out nothing is. I'm fine uh, and very relieved that I'm not suffering with something uh, terrible and life-threatening, but um, y 
you know, no one wants to hear that they have a new chronic illness. All things considered, I have a really mild case of POTS. It doesn't really interrupt my life now. <laughs> the treatment for right now is just staying like super freaking hydrated, eating more salt, getting exercise, taking care of myself essentially. There are medication options for if I want, but I thought with my doctor's guidance and the approval of a cardiologist that I continue doing what I'm doing and get on SSRIs, antidepressants, and go from there. And let me tell you, as of November 1st, I'm fine, baby. I started taking them and I feel a million times better. They, they really have pulled me out of that dark place and it's insane. Like, obviously I've had some cognitive behavioral therapy and a lot of tricks up my sleeve to deal with anxiety, um, but this really made all of that possible to work. My hope was that in reducing my anxiety, my heart rate would be stable because I'm not freaking out about it. I'm not having that feedback loop like we talked about. And I, uh, my hopes were correct and my goals have been achieved and I'm really, really thankful. Um, not only for the medicine and all the doctors that I bothered for months on end, but also my friends and family who really stepped up when I asked for help. And I think that's the important part here. If you are someone who is struggling, no matter how little, you know, if you're having trouble getting up in the morning, going to sleep at night, having trouble eating, even if it just means like having someone come over and like watch you eat, <laughs> like bring you food, make you drink a glass of water, make you get up and take a shower. Like if you have anyone that you can rely on to, to keep you accountable to your health, um, it matters. Like for me, things were so bad that just having someone in the room with me was enough to get me through the day when I otherwise felt like I couldn't, you know, keep me from going to the hospital again. <laughs> so, you know, half, half of how hard anxiety is, is keeping it in and not asking. And the same goes with depression too. It's all little things. You gotta you gotta go little by little, baby steps. And you can't worry about the big picture or how it looks on the outside, how how much shame you should feel about how you're feeling, you know? And I'm very privileged to have had the money to <laughs> do all the ridiculous tests I needed for my health problem. Um, and also, you know, have insurance and be able to have seen a therapist for a short amount of time and you know whatever I, I i recognize that i was in a good place to start with to get over these hurdles but it wasn't without constantly asking for help um, from a number of people in a number of ways so thank you everyone for being there music never heard of it i you know like I said, it, it was really hard for me to do anything I loved anymore, but slowly and surely I've been picking up all my old hobbies and being more active and being more excited about things and living <laughs> and enjoying life more. So music will come, but it does raise the question, what's my content going to look like in the future? I don't know. I think YouTube just kind of isn't the, the, the vibe anymore because like... You know, the elephant in the room is that it, once upon a time in 2016, I was making like <laughs> thousands of views of video and now I'm lucky if I get like 500. I, I'm not going to stop posting on YouTube, but it certainly doesn't seem like the, the place I want to prioritize at this point. So the best thing y'all can do other than just like watch my videos is to follow me on the social medias. I've linked all of the ones that I'm active on below. Buy my stuff on Bandcamp if you can. Stream my stuff on streaming services if you can become a member of my Patreon if you can. For just a dollar a, a video, you get literally like everything. Like all of the perks are kind of up front whenever I make stuff, which I don't anymore, but like I do. I will be, I will be doing stuff. The focus should have always been and is currently on original music and like proper release type shit. Um, Cause that's the really fulfilling stuff. I like doing covers, but also like what more can I do? I feel like the pool of ideas has been ever shrinking since the beginning. And I knew my my upload model, my, my catalog creation um, methods were not sustainable from the start. I knew at some point I was gonna run out of steam. It's just lately it's taking more steam because I'm 
busy and I ha- I've always had a full-time job at the same time and I've got a lot of life stuff going on especially now but that doesn't mean I'm gonna like disappear from YouTube I'll, I'll always be making stuff because I like doing it but I just might do it less <laughs> I might do it differently but if you become a member of my patreon and you become a member of my discord those are like essentially the two ways you will always know what what content stuff is going on the social media is better for if you just like me what what have what else have I been up to I've been writing Christmas cards. I've been making snowflakes for my living room and kitchen. I've been crocheting like fucking crazy. I've been, I've really been making stuff. Um, so I will make music and, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I love you. Goodbye.